Every time we calculate weighted average cost of capital, or WAC, we use market value notebook value. So we use market value of debt and market value of equity. Our debt could be loans or bonds. So we'll get the market value of the loan and the market value of the bonds. Our equity could be preference shares or common shares. So I need to get the market value of preference shares and market value of common shares. So it depends on the company under analysis. You could have market value of debt as just one category. You could have it as two categories, loans and bonds. Equity, you could have it as one category, or you could have it as two categories, which is preference shares and common shares. Let's get a numerical example. XYZ Limited has a market value of debt, market value of preference shares, and market value of common shares of $200 million, $100 million, and $200 million, respectively. The pre-tax cost of debt is 8%. The tax rate is 30%. A preference share has an annual dividend of $5 per share and a current price of $50. Common share beta of XYZ Limited is 1.2. Risk free rate is 7% and expected market risk is 12%. We need to calculate market value of asset, weight of debt, weight of preference shares, weight of common shares, after tax cost of debt, cost of preference shares, cost of common shares, before tax WAC or pre-tax WAC, after tax WAC or post-tax WAC. So let's start with the values given and we put it in our WAC table. So we have the market value of debt, market value of preference share and market value of common share. And we have before tax cost of debt. And we need to calculate the other variables. The first part of the question is calculate market value of asset. So what will be market value of asset? It's market value of debt plus market value of equity. Our equity here is divided in two parts, preference shares and common share. Therefore, our formula will be market value of debt plus market value of preference shares plus market value of common shares. This will give us a total of 500. So this is our market value of asset or enterprise value. Since we don't have cash here, so both enterprise value and market value of asset are the same. What will be the weight of debt or the percentage of debt or the share of debt? Get the market value of debt divided by the total. 200 divided by 500, it will give us 40%. What will be the weight of preference share or the percentage of preference shares or the share of preference shares? Get the market value of preference shares divided by the total. So it will be 100 divided by 500, it will give us 20%. The next part of the question is calculate the weight of common shares. So the weight of common shares will be the market value of common shares divided by the total. So this will give us 40%. Remember that the weight of debt plus the weight of preference share plus the weight of common shares, all of this must give you 100%. If you don't get 100%, there is something wrong with your calculations. The next part of the question is calculate our after-tax cost of debt. The formula of after-tax cost of debt is our pre-tax cost of debt, which is 8%, multiplied by 1 minus tax rate, which is 30%. Therefore, this will give us 5.6%. Remember that our before tax cost of debt or pre-tax cost of debt is always higher than our after tax cost of debt or post tax cost of debt. Why? Because we multiply our pre-tax cost of debt by one minus tax rate and that's why it will always be lower. The next part of the question is calculate the cost of preference share because it wasn't given in the question. So we know that based on our dividend discount model, we know that the share price at time t of a preference share is equal to the dividend at time t plus 1 divided by r, which is the discount rate. Therefore, here, in order to rearrange this formula to put r in one side, all other variables in the other side, so we could say that the cost of preference share is equal to the dividend at t plus 1 divided by the price at t. In the question, the dividend was 5 divided by the price now of 50. This will give us the cost of preference share of 10%. We will put it in our table here, so it will be 10%. Then, in the question, we need to calculate the cost of common shares or ordinary shares. We will use our capital asset pricing model formula. Why? Because the variables given in the question, it was risk-free rate, beta, market return. Therefore, our cost of common share is equal to risk-free rate plus beta, open bracket, market return minus risk-free rate. So we have a risk-free rate of 7% plus beta of 1.2, 1 
multiplied by open bracket, market return of 12%, minus risk free rate of 7%, this will give us 13%, and we'll put it in our table. Then we need to calculate our before tax whack or pre tax whack. So what we need to do is get the percentage of debt multiplied by before tax cost of debt plus percentage of preference share multiplied by the cost of preference share plus the percentage of common share multiplied by the cost of common share. So we will get these parts 40% times 8% it will give you 3.2% plus 20% times 10% it will give you 2% plus 40% times 13% it will give you 5.2% if we get the summation of all this it will give you 10.4% and this will be our pre-tax whack or before tax whack. The next part of the question is calculate after tax whack or post tax whack. So the formula will be here percentage of debt multiplied by cost of debt times 1 minus t. This is called after tax cost of debt or post tax cost of debt plus percentage of preference share multiplied by the cost of preference share plus the percentage of common share times the cost of common share. So here we will get the percentage of debt multiplied by the cost of debt after tax. So this part here will give us 2.24%. Then I need to get here the percentage of preference share times the cost of preference share. It will give you 2%. So this part will be 2%. I already got it from before tax. Why? Because I know that taxes doesn't affect equity. So it doesn't affect preference share and common share. Then for preference share, we did it. For common share, we'll do the same. 40% times 13%, it will give us 5.2%. So this part is 5.2%. I can get it from before tax whack and put it in after tax whack. Why? Because taxes doesn't affect equity. So if we get the summation of all these three percentages, it will give us 9.44%. As you see here, whack after tax is always lower than whack before tax. So if we check here, our before tax cost of debt will always be bigger than after tax cost of debt because in after tax cost of debt we multiply before tax cost of debt by 1 minus t. How in will be equal if taxes is zero, if there is no taxes. The same with WAC. Our before tax WAC is always bigger than our after tax WAC. How in will be equal if we don't have taxes? Because after tax WAC is based on after tax cost of debt, while before tax work is based on before tax cost of debt.